lots of hatred, lots of secrets, lots of romance, the devil or not, the hell or not. I got nightmares in my head, I fear, that the thoughts build up until I can't hear. That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper Anxiety filling up every space no Chapter 40 Jenko, my queen is feisty. A lot had changed since the day I brought her here. Her face, her eyes, her emotions, her body language, but that freaking attitude. The attitude that makes my deeper tight. She is feisty. Her eyes speaking. She is consuming me day by day, but she doesn't do anything, only if you knew her power over me, over the devil, which is the last thing I want her to know. I'm anything but good, and she is nothing but a ball of innocence, those sweet honey eyes, the soft honey skin, so soft that I will bury my face in her neck and just leave all day, forgetting all my worries. She is light in my dark world, it's like I was wandering in the dark and a dazzling spark caught me. It was new to me in my dark world, but it captured me and foolishly I just went towards it and now I'm consumed. She is bringing the light, filling up my dark spaces. My room full of dark, she keep it lit up, warm and cozy. She makes it feel like a home, a place I return and the feeling of being returned is different than usual. The room lit up with lights at night and in daytime curtains off. The bright light of the day fills up the spaces in my room. Her scent everywhere, literally everywhere, in my house, in my closet, in my room, in my bathroom, everywhere. She is everywhere. My nights are no longer lonely. She keeps me happy. Happy. After many years, I felt like that. Maybe forever, but one thing is for sure. She ain't going anywhere from me. She is mine, her laughter is mine, her nervousness is mine, and her tears is also mine. No one can make her cry except me. No one is allowed to. She has been there by my side. I see her molding things, rearranging, resettling. She is sweet but feisty. Those eyes when she gets mad. Those lips that she bite out of nervousness. Those beautiful brown and red hair falls on her hair, face in waves down on her back, below her hip. Those cakes, that voice, God, everything, everything is just heaven about her. What a tragedy. The devil wants heaven. The devil is doomed. She has opened herself to me in many ways. Her sulking, her anger, her irritation, her stutters, her long lashes, her tantrums. She is heaven. And she is all mine. This is the next morning. And she is awake and getting ready because she is ready to go back to her office. She took a look at herself in the mirror and was about to leave. Munanj? I called and she halted. The thing that she knows, it's her name. Munanj, given by me. Yes, she asked. You're forgetting something, aren't you, baby girl? She briefly took a close look at her and again, no. Come here, kitten. I said, and she obeyed. I swear her obedience was an urge to bend her against the counter in my closet. She came in front of me, the corner of my mouth twitched. I opened the drawer and took out a tie, handed it to her. She huffed, squinting her eyes. A oh, your kid can't even do your own tie? She complained. It was a deal, baby. She rolled her eyes. Roll your pretty eyes again, and I will ruin that pretty face and the clothes right on the counter, Montreuil. I snarled, and I saw her gulping in ecstasy. Without a word, she put her hands on my shoulder and she slid the tie around my neck. She started doing my tie. The smack never left my mouth. The sweet smell filled me to the earnest and it's to have more of her. She was done and looked at me. I thought you didn't know how to tie a tie. And then she rolled her eyes. And that again. In a swift motion, she was bent against her counter. She gasped. What the? Jion, get off! She spoke. But didn't I warn you, my aunt? A smack on that beautiful, delicious, savouring cake. She gasped, her pencils curled, still on, another. Ah, Jungkook, what? Her voice was so melodic. Her hands on the counter, she was not resisting. Instead, she was enjoying. My one hand on her back and the other doing the job. After five in total, 
I pulled her and made her face me. Her face was flushed. She cheeks were blushing. I pegged her temple and left smirking. Chapter 15 Wine. He just punished me like a devil and then pegged my temple. My poor little Keku. Jerk. Imbecile. Hot freaking Greek beauty. Ah, you one freaking rude Jungkook. Who punished like that? Who does that to their wife? But... It caught me off guard. I turned on this early in the morning. Chuck and the pack on my temple. No one has ever kissed me on my temple since my mom left. In this filthy world. He is earning a space that I don't want him to earn. But he is doing that. Earning a thing. I don't want him to do that. But he is doing that. Earning it. Severing it. Severing me. My knees are still jelly. He is bad. But. I can't help but think about him all day, every day, and every night. He is there, right there to tease me, to cheer me up. He is something I shouldn't be wanting, but here I am. Oh my great goodness, I am possessed. I fixed myself and still felt the stunk. You already had a breakfast. What an irony, there is V now. Surely he forced me to have breakfast with him, and all the time he would just be staring at me while eating can't do anything just to eat and leave now it's time to go to office i entered the lobby and anna hugged me running to me oh my god how are you how's your food why didn't you call me you didn't why didn't you text me she showered her questions on me i'm fine my foot is fine and things are complicated i will tell you but not here after office i answered and why do you have gods guarding you here she questioned, raising an eyebrow. A uh, long story. I smiled nervously. You better explain to me. We went to lift. Well, how's it going here in the office? I asked. Everything is good, but Mr. Dixon is a bit off. She replied. Not anything. That man is always off. I replied sarcastically. Oh, I forgot to inform you. We are having a meeting with the Jones, and Mr. Kim personally told me to tell you to study the file and do the presentation, she said. Again? Yes, honey, again, I huffed in response. You have to take the file from Mr. Dixon. She spoke. Oh my great God, please save me. The lifter opened and we stepped out. I will go and get the file, I said to her. Okay, best of luck, she spoke sarcastically to which I rolled my eyes. I went straight to his office. I knocked on the door and entered. Good morning, sir, he shifted his attention to me, the hatred. I don't quite understand what what he holds in his eyes. Whatever it is doesn't give me good vibes. Hello there, Miss Wine. I thought you would not come. He spoke sarcastically, eyeing me, making me uncomfortable. Well, sir, I needed the file of Jones. Yes, yes, that file. He held out the file for me. When I extended my hand, he took it back and a frown it placed on my face. Well, what did you do to the Jones in the first meeting that they want to have own things with you? Is there any special treatment? Give me some tips, please. He spoke, grinning wickedly. Is that old man out of his mind? No, sir, I just gave the presentation and that is it. He hummed and extended the file. I took it and came out cringing. My mood went off. He was literally accusing me. I am not that low to low clients just for a freaking position. Even though Jungkook is my husband now, I will still keep it professional. In the office, I went to chair, my chair and sat there with a the pout. Are you okay, sweetie? Anna approached and asked. I hummed. Want to talk about it? No, it's just, I'm out of the D-word, and she understood. She chuckled lowly and went back to work after giving me a pat on my shoulder. I was alone again. I need motivation to study this file. I tried to study it, but that old piece of lady finger on the earth, he spoiled it. My phone chimed and with the not notification just then. I checked it. It was a text. A text from my Greek god. Missing me, Manoj? In your dreams, I replied. Fiesti, he wrote. Shut up, I replied. Spill it, baby. You're having a meeting here and they want him to do the presentation, I replied. And? He knows work is not a problem for me. Instead, I enjoy it. Mr. Dixon, who is that? He questioned. Our project manager. And then he asked, and? He kind of seems he doesn't like me taking the lead. Hmm, it's okay, love. Professional jealousy is okay. You just do your work. Or instead, you can join my firm. He texted. Huh. No, I'm fine here. You are afraid. You won't be just working with me. He texted with a winking emoji. 
this tune freaking junk shut up i replied oh my are you maybe perhaps blushing won't you hear he texted and i knew he was teasing me go away i texted and in return he sent me those wicked devil emojis i felt good i studied the file and it was almost time for the meeting i looked up and saw my fallen angel coming with luca behind him a whole black attire from head to toe the rolex shining on his wrist the amani suit flexing on his biceps the cold look on the hot face like a razor slicing me apart the scene of this morning dancing in my head he gave me a look and the corner of his mouth and just twitched slightly I saw goats drooling over him and not to mention that I felt like taking their eyes out for eyeing my man. I'm sure he saw me grating teeth looking at the girls who were drooling over him. My desk was in the first row, heaving at me, making me my eyes go wide. I looked around as if anyone noticed, but thank goodness no one did. I prepared myself to play it cool because this man is dangerous. Just very dangerous. I went to the meeting room. I sat on the chair, and to my surprise, Mr. Dixon sat next to me. Jungkook and Mr. Kim came, and Jungkook gave me a look and sat on a chair next to Mr. Kim. I was okay until Mr. Dixon's leg brushed with me. I thought of it accidental, but still disgust filled me. I went to explain the details. I was nervous. Jungkook saw that, and when our eyes met, he raised an eyebrow. I gave the presentation and went back to my seat. I was proud of myself until Mr. Dixon's leg again brushed with mine. I shifted in my seat out of uneasiness. My eyes locked with Jungkook, and he was looking. That man is never sparing me. Ah, oh, now he will ask me. Rest of the day went well. No interruption with Mr. Dixon. Gladly, Jungkook didn't ask anything. Anna, oh, yes, I have to tell her that I got married and how I feel, but didn't disclose who my husband is because. I know he takes his marketing seriously. Three weeks passed by. Mr. Dixon started acting weird. His eyes an absolute horror for me. The way he looks at me does not does not give me good vibes. He started loading me with extra work, and from last week I have to work over hours just to get it done. He was acting like he wanted to some kind of punishing me. This day too, he gave me a lot of work, and I'm. Working over hours, but today he told me to complete the file and report him. It's ten p.m. I am so late today. My stomach is cursing me because I haven't eaten anything since lunch time. Finally, I said as the file was complete. I stretched and got up. My phone jammed with the notification. It was Jungkook. Are you still in the office? Yes, just completed the file. You shouldn't overwork yourself like that. I'm calling Mr. Kim. He texted. Jungkook, it's done. It's just work. I am going to give. This file to Mr. Dixon. I replied. I texted and left my phone there. I knocked and went inside. So it's done. I handed him the file and he looked into it. He nodded. I turned my heel and he spoke. Did I tell you to leave? Um, sorry, sir. He got up from his chair. My heart thumping in my rib cage. Negative vibe. Negative vibe and just negative vibe. No, please don't stop. Jungkook save me, please Jungkook save me. No, no, no. To be continued.